Hello everybody, this is Mohamed Meligi and today we are going to talk about AngularJS. AngularJS is a JavaScript framework from Google that allows you to create very complex JavaScript applications. And the way it does this is by providing you with several components. The first component we are going to talk about is HTML templating. So it allows you to convert your HTML into a template that you can inject different parts easy into it, like having a loop and having an if condition, showing and hiding different things and corresponding to different events automatically straight from your HTML. It also allows you to data bind this HTML into JavaScript objects so that if your JavaScript object changes, your HTML automatically affects this change. And if your HTML changes, say if it is a form element, for example, your JavaScript object automatically gets updated without you having to write event hooks with plain JavaScript or jQuery or whatever to handle all this plumbing code. It also allows you to have your application split into a lot of small parts using the model view controller pattern where the model is your JavaScript objects, the view is the HTML template, and the controller is your own different JavaScript functions that handle the interaction with this view model without having to worry about HTML at all. In order to make this possible, it allows you to encapsulate any complex HTML you may need to have in a separate component, which it calls directive. It also allows you to encapsulate your logic in different parts and different modules like services and factories and other stuff and having them injected automatically into your controller when the view calls for it. It also provides you with a lot of functionality that you can use in your view and your controller like doing AJAX validation, JSON conversion and so much more. In this video, we're going to talk mainly about the HTML templating and data binding capabilities of AngularJS. We will not even create any JavaScript controller or anything. Not that this is the way I'd recommend that you do AngularJS, but it is a very simple way to start and it shows how easy this framework makes tasks that usually require a lot of jQuery code to get them up and running. So let's get started. Going to the AngularJS website, that's AngularJS dot org and clicking on the download link we get a screen for multiple download options we can get stable version unstable version both of them are hosted on google cdn we can get the minified version or get the raw version without minification this can be helpful for debugging and stuff so for this demo we will use this we can download this version include it with power package manager or just get the cdn url Let's do that. And we start creating our own uh, application. We switch to jspain.com, which is a very nice online HTML, CSS, and JavaScript editor. We already have the AngularJS script reference in here, and we can think about our application. Our application will show a list of customers, which is just a list of customer names wrapped in objects. If we don't have any customers, we tell the user we don't have any, and we will allow the user to add a new customer and remove any existing customer in the list. So let's tell the user what we're going to do. We will have an H2 saying current customers. And as we don't have any customers yet, we we'll start by saying no customers yet. When we get to having some customers, we will want to have our ordered list where we're going to display a list item for each customer that will contain the customer name. And so far, we haven't done anything really. It's all a very static HTML page. To change that, we add the ng add attribute to the page and it tells Angular to use the entire page as its own template, which we could have limited to another div if we wanted, but for this example, it would be sufficient. And we start getting to add a new customer. So we'll say new customer. 
I have a four. And inside this form, we are going to have one input for customer name. Very simple stuff so far. And a button for adding the new customer. Then we want to connect our form to Angular. So for example, for the customer name, we will tell it that it will be connected to a view model property, which is the name model of the new customer object. And Angular will be smart enough to create this object for us whenever needed, as well as name property. Then we'll say on form submit. Let's have a customer's list and push our new customer to it. This will not work um, as it is right now. We can see here it does nothing. And the main reason is that Angular will always create new objects for us, but it will not create new arrays. So when Angular sees this customer's name, it will just say, okay, then you probably want a customer's object, but in this case, we want a, an array. So we will need to initialize this individually. So I go here to the list. I could have gone anywhere. And I say part of our initialization, like page load or document ready or whatever, we want to set this customer's list to an empty array to start with. Then we can loop over this array. So we say ng repeat for each customer in our customer's list. We need to display a dynamic in our HTML. So that's how Angular defines this dynamic one with this double Angular brackets. And in series, it should get us something working. So let's test it. So we have customer one added. If we try to add customer two or three or whatever, note that what actually happened is that the customer we have has been automatically set to whatever the customer name in here. And the main reason is that Angular just being too smart. It will recognize that this is the same object um, that we added in here. So it will connect it automatically. And even though it will push more customers, it will, it will know that the object that exists twice in the array and exists in the form is the same object. So this is Angular's magic, although I'm not working for our favor this time. To be able to fix this, we can come here and reset our new customer to an empty object. Note that here we are uh, doing it only when, when we need it. When we do need an, um, a new customer initialization, we shouldn't have needed that. And we didn't, we only did it when we needed to reset the reference. So say customer one, once we set the new customer to um, an empty object, Angular automatically detected that this new object doesn't have a name, so that's why the text box is empty. And we can add customer two, customer three, etc. Except that now it doesn't make sense to say that we don't have any customers because we do. So let's fix that. We go to the p tag and we say we want to hide it in g hide. Whenever we have a um, customer's lens. So at first, we have an empty list. So the lens will be zero and the height will be false. As soon as we add a customer, the lens will be one, which is a truthy value. So ng height will automatically hide the no customers statement for us. And we can see this is working with adding more customers as well. The next and last part in this video will be allowing us to add the ability to remove customers. Going with that, we will have a link that feels like delete. 
this link will be doing nothing so we'll set it ref to javascript void but we will handle the click of this anchor and make it do the delete functionality for us ng click is, an, is another angular directive so it has all of our angular functionality so we can say customers dot splice which is javascript's way of adding and removing elements in specific index in the array because we are inside an ng repeat already angular will provide us with this special dollar sign index property we will see the use of dollar sign properties is very common in angular so what we're going to do is we will tell javascript that we want to remove um, one element from the array starting from this index let's see if this will work so we will say customer one poor customer which will soon be deleted that's why it's poor and then we can even uh, remove customer one as well automatically the message for no customers will be displayed and we can add another new customer no problem and yeah we can add and remove as many times as we want and the code that was required to do this um, add, remove, and list functionality was really very little, and it was all written in HTML. We didn't need to have any special script file or anything. In real application, or even um, with a relatively sized demo, we would probably have things like the ng init code, as well as the remove maybe and for sure the submit could handled from a controller uh, normally you really don't want to mix your application logic with your html but the purpose of this video is to show how strong this templating engine is and how strong is two-way data binding that it can change so many things in the way you think about like different tasks and how difficult they might be with this demo comes the end of this video. We have gone through AngularJS HTML templating with a bit of JavaScript written in its attributes, so there was a bit of trickery when we said we were just writing HTML. And as explained, it was just to show the power of Angular templating, not that this is what you would like to write in your own like real AngularJS application, where most likely all your logic will go into controllers. This may be the topic for my second video, whether it is or not, most likely it will be something around JavaScript programming or .NET and ASP.NET and c -sharp programming because that's what I've been doing through the past four years, mostly .NET on the web. I hope I have helped you learn something or find something interesting. Whether you have any comments, any suggestions with uh, around improving this video or around ideas for the next videos, Please let me know. You can contact me on Twitter as at Miligi. You can contact me through the blog, groovetop.net. Or you can just email me at ng.miligi at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching.